Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, March the 6th of 2023. So we've already cleared two months of the year, which is pretty crazy to think of. It's gone by pretty fast. Uh, this will have covered the week of February 27th through March the 5th of 2023. Uh, this was a week full of quite a bit of stress and or anger, and I'm going to be talking about that here in just a second. So, no Platinum Trophies earned this week, but overall, I mean, there was some progress made at least. Okay, yep, that was the previous week. I was just checking on that. Uh, I do apologize for not being able to play Terminator Resistance this week. I do think it's only going to take like one more stream to finish this. So I'll try to stream it sometime this coming week and just get that last set of trophies. It won't be like the Friday or Saturday stream or anything like that. But uh, something else came up, as you guys can probably see at the top of the trophy list here. Something else came up, so that's the reason I didn't get the chance to stream this. It was, a, uh, it was an interesting game. So, first and foremost, GTA 5. Uh, Doomsday Heist. I was working on Criminal Masterminds this weekend. Uh, we were able to get through all of Act 1 and about half of Act 2 with pretty much no problems. Uh, this is the four-player variant of Criminal Mastermind, by the way. So, it actually seemed like things were going pretty well because you, you're allowed to die and stuff in the prep missions. The prep missions don't actually affect it as long as you just complete them with the same group and complete them in order. So, that's kind of nice. And then Act 1 is pretty easy overall. Really, the only tough mission in Act 1 is the server farm mission. It's the one where you have to stealth your way into the facility, which actually, ironically enough, uh, getting detected and failing the mission doesn't actually count against your trophy. The only thing that does count against you is if you die. So we got through that. That one did take a couple of tries. We had a couple times where we got detected and we had one death in there in that gigantic server room in the bottom. So it was annoying, but we got through that. And then Act 2, the prep missions were perfectly fine and the first one or two setups were not a problem either. Which is surprising given that Avenger mission is known for being actually one of the tougher ones in the entire entirety of this heist. So then we get to the mission where you have to rescue the HVT, H, whatever it's called, like the, the high value target. So you go in and rescue him and we were doing perfectly fine. We got him out. Uh, it's not awful. It's definitely one of the tougher missions, but we were able to get him out and all. We got him into our Karuma and we start driving far, far away to whatever the location is we have to go to. Unfortunately, the guy that we are playing with, the guy that I knew from the beginning was going to be the one that was going to screw us over because he's honestly not that good at the game. Uh, he's driving the Karuma quite poorly for that matter, and he, like he did with pretty much any driving section. And we get all the way up to the airfield where, uh, wherever you have to drop him off at, and he runs the car into a fuel tank, blowing us up. Now, everyone immediately does the quitting method, so you're supposed to be able to close application, you do it immediately, it's not supposed to do anything to you, so we all do that. And I wasn't even the last one to quit out. So, the other three guys, their trophy progress or their quest progress is fine. You know, you lose some time, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Mine resets. Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to explain that bullshit to me, I would love to know. Because I'm the only one that got reset when I wasn't even the last one to close application. So, for some stupid reason, the game decides to reset me and not anyone else, including the dude that crashed the car into the flaming tank thing. Uh, I am I still can't believe that because, I mean, the dude, I know that he's not very good at the game, but, like, can you not follow the most simple, basic instructions and premise of the game of not crashing your car into an explosive fuel tank? I mean, how hard is that? It's not that hard, but of course, it fails it and it screws it over for everyone. So, I will never be playing with him again. Uh, he's on my shit list, pretty much, for playing any games with. Uh, so, yeah, that was wonderful. 
Plus, he was also kind of inconsistent with being able to play. In all honesty, the group I was in, like, the other two guys that I was playing with were perfectly fine with, like, skill-wise and all. But unfortunately, one of them is in, like, the UK, so it made it a little bit harder to schedule the ability to play for that obvious reason. Because, like, he could only... Because, you know, when it's, you know, 8 o'clock over here when I can play, it's 1 o'clock in the morning for him. So it's not exactly a, a feasible thing that we can do outside of weekends. But, yeah, he just decides to crash the car into the fuel tank and it screws everything over. So it reset my progress, which means I would have to start this crap all over again. I know I can do it. At, at minimum, the four-player version really isn't that bad. It takes a good bit of time, but it's not overly difficult as long as you have a group of people that are somewhat competent at being able to play the game and you're not weighed down by someone that does stuff like that. So I, I do think it's something I can do, but I mean, I gotta have an actual group that knows how to play the freaking game. Or excuse me, uh, a full group that knows how to play the freaking game. Because, like I said, the other two guys were perfectly fine. They were great. I had no problems with them. But uh, you would get one, one dumbass in your group will ruin your run entirely. And I just also want to know why I'm the only one that got their progress reset when I wasn't even the last one to close application. Why do I get targeted by the game to get screwed over like that? I, I would love to know that. If anyone wants to give me a, a reasoning for that, I would love to know why that happened. It, it's just complete bullshit. This is one of the worst trophies I've ever seen in a video game. Because, I mean, like you see there, it's not even fair, reasonable, consistent... Uh, that, that's just a problem for me is that, you know, a trophy can be difficult is one thing, but when the trophy and the game itself don't actually function properly, that's a whole nother issue that really, really gets on my nerves because, you know, I don't have, you know, four hours to just constantly set aside and go back and get back to that point. Maybe if I was still in college... It would be one thing. If I was still in college, I'm sure it wouldn't have been as big of a problem. But nowadays, you know, I actually have stuff to do in life. I don't have four hours to set aside just to get back to that point and the eight hours needed to keep going through this stupid heist over and over again. And, I mean, I'm kind of afraid to go back through it because knowing that the game screwed me over this time, how long until it chooses to screw me over again later on? You know, is it going to screw me over in, like, the final mission somehow? Plus, like, people can constantly get disconnected for no good reason, and that can void it. Uh, if people get disconnected at any point during it, that'll, that'll screw you over. Uh, you all have to be, like, in the facility at the same time, or else it can risk not counting for people or disconnecting people. It, it's just a completely BS trophy, and it should not exist if they can't make their game actually work. If you made the game actually work and be fair and consistent, yeah, I could then maybe understand the trophy. But if your game doesn't work on the most basic levels, you cannot put a trophy in the game like that. Okay, anger and rant over with, for now at least. So, Power Wash Simulator. We can get on to a much more positive note here with Power Wash Simulator. Uh, I didn't earn too many trophies this week because we're kind of getting near the end of the game and some of these last few jobs take quite a while to get through. So I was able to purchase the Prime Vista Pro. It is the ultimate of the power washers. It is the best one and all six of its attachments. It's quite, quite expensive. It's like over $10,000 to purchase everything. But it's highly worth it because it is absolutely the best of the power washers you can get. I can actually probably go ahead and get this trophy pretty soon just because I've purchased everything I would need to with all the power washers and attachments, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, still need to go back and do this. This is probably going to be the last trophy I get. I'm probably going to save this one for last because it's not a hard trophy at all. It's just, I, I thought I had done everything correctly for it. Apparently I did not though, but you know, it's okay. It happens. You miss things sometimes. And otherwise, let's see, what else did I get during this past week? Uh, okay, I think that this is a new one. So, knocking over the four buckets. This is in the ancient statue. There's four buckets sitting around, and you just have to knock them each over with the power washer. The red nozzle works best for it. Pretty self-explanatory. They're all pretty easy to find. Uh, the ancient monument is the, like, 
hand-shaped monument. It's kind of weird looking. You have to clean the entire thing using only the white nozzle, which is a little annoying just because the white nozzle is the least effective at spraying things. But as long as you have the Prime Vista Pro, it's not too bad. Uh, the fishing boat, this one also wasn't too terrible either because it's just the bow, the steps, and the main deck first. So that's a pretty typical trophy compared to, you know, a lot of these other ones where you just have to do something first. So nothing too difficult there. Uh, this is the final trophy for beating the main story, which I'm on the final job right now. It's that giant temple thing. It, it takes forever. I've been on that one for several days just spraying it on and off and I'm not even at 70% yet. It is massive. It has so much stuff to clean. Uh, then we had stars were already done. 95% was already done. Okay, gold medals. So the gold medals have turned out to be a little bit tougher than I was expecting. Like I didn't think they were going to be quite as tricky as they were. They're actually pretty strict limits a lot of the time. So, for the five gold medals, the ones I did, I did both the water and the time trials for the van, and I did the water and time trials for the golf cart, so that's where I got my first four at, and then I did the water trial for the motorcycle and sidecar, which actually ended up being a lot easier than I thought. That one's actually pretty generous. It gives you 15 liters of water, and you can do it in 12 so that one really wasn't too bad and the van water trial wasn't awful the golf cart both trials took a few tries but they weren't terrible the van time trial is apparently still one of the easiest but i beat it with only about a second left which is kind of crazy apparently the bungalow time trial is actually pretty easy according to some guides i've seen you can do it in like 20 to 21 minutes so apparently that's one of the easier ones. Uh, the back garden time trial I tried. I think if I had been a little bit more efficient, I probably could have done it within the 25 minutes. But I think I messed up at a couple places, just wasn't quite efficient enough, mainly with like cleaning the stones and stuff. I, I could see that one probably being done, but I feel like that would be a lot tighter than the bungalow. So there's really about, you know, five or six that aren't too difficult to do that are probably the most worthwhile to attempt this on. So all I have left in the game is finishing the final... Oh, scroll away there. Yep, all I have left to do is finish the final job, which I'm at like 65 or so percent, as well as a couple of things to purchase, and of course the van with the red nozzle, which is probably going to be my last trophy. So I will definitely have this game done this week, and if I get the chance to stream it, Terminator will also be done this week. And then finally, the other game I worked on this week, Ratchet and Clank All for One, or according to Ghost, the game's initial name was going to be Ratchet and Clank 4Play, uh, or 4Player, I don't know if it was going to be 4Play or 4Player, but you know exactly what joke they were going for with that. So, this game came up out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, Ghost convinced me and Killer to play through it because it has a couple of co-op trophies that are both pretty easy to get. But uh, he convinced us to play it, and I can't say I'm a particularly big fan of this game. Uh, it also kind of sucks because this was my very first ever Ratchet & Clank game I've played, which is probably about the worst one to have played first, because as far as I'm aware, this is one of, if not the worst ones that has a trophy list. Not in terms of difficulty, but in terms of the actual game being pretty bad. It's meant to be played in up to four-player co-op, and there's actually still people out there that'll join you randomly. We actually had several randoms try to join throughout our few nights of play in this, which was very surprising. So, the trophy list is not particularly hard, nor is it all that time-consuming, but it is a little bit annoying at times. It's not a very good game overall. It's also kind of a buggy game. We had quite a few times where, like, enemies would stop spawning and we couldn't move forward. We had a time where uh, we couldn't... Where, like, maybe it was Killer just couldn't even move for some reason because that makes logical sense. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't really a particularly enjoyable game, but it's not too hard of a platinum uh, interestingly enough, though, despite only being rated as like a 2 out of 10 in a 15 hours on PSN Profiles, this is by far the rarest of the Ratchet & Clank Platinums. It's actually a sub-10% Platinum, 
and a good chunk of the trophies are actually uncommon or rare, which is quite surprising for a Ratchet and Clank game. These games are usually not too difficult, so I guess if you want a number of, you know, less common trophies, this isn't a bad option for it, because they're really, most of them are not that hard. So, this is a level-specific trophy in one of the earliest levels of the game. This one is pretty easy. Ghost knew, like, exactly what to do with it. Uh, this is a story trophy. This is the next-to-last trophy I have left. It's the next one I'm going to go for. Uh, this seems to be one of the toughest of the miscellaneous trophies. You have to blow up 85% of the exploding crates. I think there's, like, maybe 10 of them or so. There's, like, I think maybe it's, like, 11 of them or something. It's not very many of them, but... If, like, enemies blow them up or if they fall off, then you will fail with that. And if you die at any point, like, both you and your partner die, it'll respawn all the crates so you can't do it then. So, kind of annoying, but I should be able to get this one knocked out probably on Monday. So, probably on the night that this is going up and probably get the Platinum that night. Uh, that's a story-related trophy. Uh, this one is best done playing solo as... Quark, I believe is his name, the big green guy, because he has a shield ability, and as long as you activate the shield, uh, you can get hit by the beetles, and it will not void the trophy. You want to do it, though, in solo, because your AI partner can get hit by them, but if you're playing in co-op and anyone in the group gets hit, you will fail. So it's actually not that hard once you know that little strategy, because there's only six of them, and you can just use the shield on pretty much any of them, so it's not really that big a deal. Uh, that's a story trophy. That's a story trophy. Uh, this one is seems to be glitched in a good way because you don't have to kill nearly all of them. Like, you only have to kill maybe the first half of them by knocking them into the water. That's at least what we did, so it seems to be glitched in a good way, so that's kind of nice. Uh, story trophy. This one is technically not story, but it's pretty tough to miss. It's when you're on top of the giant, iron giant type of robot. Uh, story trophy. This one requires two players, I believe. So I think maybe you have to do it either with an online partner or with a... Uh, or with like a second controller or whatever. It We managed to get it. It was a little trickier than expected. But I don't even think we failed at it. It's just very tedious. Story trophy. Uh, this one's pretty easy. It's during like the final mission of the game. It's actually not that bad. Uh, story trophy, then we have, oh, this one was really, really annoying, unfortunately. This one took, uh, several tries for us to get through, because, I think it was partially because we didn't fully understand how the energy crystals worked, but we eventually got it. It was kind of annoying, but nothing too terrible. The eight enemies with one shot is probably going to come naturally. Four enemies with the pyroblaster at the same time is pretty easy to get. A lot of these trophies can be farmed in the nest like outskirts area right before you go inside it spawns like two giant groups of enemies that you can deal with uh same thing with this one uh this one you just have to have everyone using the critter gun at the same time that's the easiest way to do it it's, it's pretty easy because that gun's really overpowered uh eight enemies in eight seconds with dark star fission with two or more teammates it sounds more complicated than it is just have everyone use the dark star tether in one of those early areas and you should be able to get it pretty easily uh 100 kills with mr zircon out is pretty easy that's an ability you get it's not too terribly difficult the 150 melee kills is super easy the 50 in a row using melee damage is actually not as hard as it sounds you can do that early on in that nest level uh you can there's an area you can spawn in. i think it's the second checkpoint just make sure you're doing it with either an online partner or with a second controller because if you do it with the AI, they will end up killing the enemies and you don't want that to happen. So what you can do is at the beginning of the level, just basically keep throwing your wrench to hit everything. And there's only going to be like one enemy you have to fight that can't just be killed with wrench throws, but you can use your second controller to move forward and kill it. Uh, the Doppelbanger is, I believe, Ratchet's special ability. The Quantum Deflector is Quark's special ability. The Zony Blaster is Clank's special ability. And the Cloaker is the trophy I'm saving for last. That is the other villainous guy's uh, special ability that you have. The guy that's the purple color. So, none of these trophies are difficult, but they do require you to spend a little bit of time farming bolts with a different class so that you can unlock the abilities. 
Uh, eight enemies in two seconds is pretty much unmissable. The co-op overload is basically unmissable. Then you have to revive a teammate with one second left on the clock. This doesn't require another online player, but it will require at least a second controller, apparently. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's pretty easy. You might get it naturally. You might not. Uh, buy any weapon is unmissable. Purchase all of the weapons. Uh, you do want to do this while you're playing through the game at first, just so you at least have all the weapons available. There's only like 12 of them. You have to fully upgrade all weapons, which you want to hold off on. You want to upgrade the uh, Combuster, and yes, I called it something else numerous times because it's way too easy. Uh, but you want to save both of these until after you get the million, or you want to save the upgraded trophy until after you get the million bolts. I'll talk about that in a second. 500 kills is pretty much unmissable. The 50 kills with the vacuum, I actually got pretty late during some farming. It's not difficult, I just kind of forgot to use it for most of the game. Uh, you have to bank a total of 1 million bolts. Now for this, I highly, highly recommend going for this in co-op. If you're playing in co-op, you get way more bolts for everything that you do. If you were playing in four player, you would probably have every player get this by the end of the playthrough. In terms of our playthrough, Ghost got it very easily, Killer got it during the final mission, like midway through it, and I got it in one replay of one of the checkpoints in the final mission. I had like 920-ish thousand going into it or something, so uh, nothing... It's not difficult, but it is very grindy, and it's a lot grindier if you play in solo, just because in solo you get way fewer bolts. So once you have reached 1 million bolts in your bank, that's when you go back and purchase all your upgrades, because all the upgrades all together cost about 700,000 bolts, so they're pretty expensive. Uh, then you have to reach a lobby and play an online game. Those are your only two true online trophies in this game. So they're both very, very easy, but of course you can play through the whole game in co-op, and it makes it a lot more enjoyable to play through the whole thing in co-op. Uh, you have to play a single-player game, which is just clicking the offline button, and you have to play an offline-only game with a second controller. So this game will require a second controller. I'm playing this on PlayStation Now, by the way. I'm not playing this on the PS3 because it's free on PlayStation Now, or what is the newest version of PlayStation Now. So you will need to have two controllers to do everything, and you will need to play a little bit of online. It's one of the only Ratchet and Clank games that has any sort of online trophies. That's kind of why we're doing it now, just because there's been so many server shutdowns over the last couple years. And that way, if I ever wanted to do all the Ratchet and Clank games, I would be able to. There's only one other one that has uh, online trophies, but they're really easy ones as well that you can knock out in a single day. So I'm not too worried about it. So let's go ahead and sync up our trophies. So, level 818, 87%, 25,365 total trophies, 696 platinums, 4,536 gold, 6,690 silvers, 13,443 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. I will finish GTA 5 at some point. I am determined that is going to be my rarest trophy of all time. I am determined that I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm not sure exactly when or how long it's going to take. I need to actually make sure that I have a really solid group, and I would need to probably find a group where we're actually all in the same or similar time zone so we can play more than once or twice a week. Uh, obviously, that's no blame on anyone, just we're all in different time zones, so it just makes it harder to do things. So that's fine and all, but hopefully I can find a new group that where everyone is in pretty much the same time zone and then we'll be able to work on this over the course of several weeks because if you can play it you know a couple of hours a night then we can knock out one run every like four to five days probably as long as there's not too many resets so we could potentially have this trophy done in like two to three weeks if i'm you know, having a really good run of stuff. Unless the game decides to completely screw me over again, which, of course, has me worried. Uh, otherwise, though, this week, I hope to finish off Terminator Resistance. I will probably stream it. Unless I'm going to be playing GTA Five. I should be streaming this on Tuesday or Wednesday. And we will hopefully finish off Terminator Resistance. And then, of course, there's Power Wash Simulator, which is, of course, not a difficult platinum by any means. It's just, I'm getting close to the end. It's just going to take a while to clean that last thing. And along with that, Ratchet & Clank All for One, I will get done with this week. So, should have 
uh, a couple of Platinums and a 100% this week, which will be pretty solid. We'll be at 698. So for 699, it'll probably be some easy peasy game. And 700, I think, is probably going to be Ratchet and Clank uh, ripped apart because that's going to allow us to go from arguably the worst game in the franchise to one of, if not the best game in the franchise, and also the shortest and easiest one in the franchise. So I'm actually looking forward to that, but it's supposed to be a great game, and hopefully it'll give me a, a much more positive perspective on the Ratchet and Clank series, because if All for One is the only one you've ever played, then you're going to be like me and probably not have the best opinion of the, or best first opinion of first look, whatever you want to call it, first uh, impression of the franchise. So along with all of that, I'll probably start the PS5 version of Power Wash Simulator once the PS4 version is done. That way I have something else to, you know, play around and chill out on for another few weeks, and I'll have, you know, a better idea of what to do this time around, which is also good. The Division 2, honestly, GTA 5 has pissed me off so much that I'm a lot more concerned about doing other online games. There's still a chance I will do Division 2 because I know it's not as difficult as GTA 5 stuff, but another part of me just really wants to let it go and never touch it because I'm just worried about how online is going to go. And I mean, I'm not going to do whatever the spin-off Division game is that's coming out. I'm not planning to because supposedly that's the next thing they're going to do is some kind of weird spin-off. So maybe it's not really worth it to do Division 2 after how much hell the Division 1 put me through. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'll probably do it at some point, but then there's that part of me that just doesn't really want to bother with it. Then in April, we have COD Classic Shadow of the Colossus Outer Worlds, which are all probably going to get pushed back. But in April, we definitely have Horizon Forbidden West DLC. So I am actually looking forward to that. I'm hoping it's going to be fun. The Frozen Wilds DLC in the first game was pretty good, so I'm hoping that this one's going to be pretty good as well. And then just a few other old games to do. I think I mentioned this last time, I own Escape Dead Island for the PS3. I bought it for like 2 or $3 in the bargain bin. And I'm kind of nervous because like one guy says it's like a 2 out of 10 and one guy says it's like a 6 out of 10. So I don't really know what to think about all of that and how difficult that's going to be and if it's going to be worth me suffering through. I don't think it has any multiplayer or anything, but like a part of me is just, you know, do I really want to do that? Do I really want to do another Dead Island game after how both versions of Riptide screwed up on me and everyone in the group? I don't know. Uh, we will have to see, though, about that in the future. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. Please like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell if you haven't already. Schedule should be pretty normal moving forward. Uh, just the only thing that would get in the way is if GTA 5, if we're going to be, you know, working on Criminal Mastermind at nights or something, and that might change around stream schedules and stuff. But we'll have to see. But otherwise, should be able to finish off Power Wash and Ratchet and Clank this week. And Terminator um, might make progress on GTA 5, might not. I guess we'll have to see. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later this week for some more content.